Hi everyone, this is Naha Daily from the American University in Cairo, and I have some folks here who are going to do a reflection, sort of soul searching type of exercise called Ikigai, and I came across it, I, I heard about it in a keynote once, um, and it's supposed to be Japanese for a reason for being, that's what Wikipedia says anyway, so it's a Japanese concept referring to something that gives a person a sense of purpose, um, a reason for living, and I have sort of this graphic that I got from Wikimedia, uh, that I would use this with my students where each person would have a slide and they would fill it up. So the first thing they would say is what they're good at. Second thing is what they love. Third thing is what the world needs. And the fourth thing, instead of what you can be paid for, which is what the original says, is I would say what they can get course credit for. So they're sort of to help students do a project about something they're passionate about or they feel like is their vocation or something like that and if they can manage to get all four that's ikigai if they can, if they can get any two of these it's you know different combinations of things give different things so sam you said you've heard of this concept before and used it well so um you know i've seen it lots on social media and stuff like that but the place that i've actually um seen it used and experienced it being used was dissertation coaching um, and it was about your research. And so it was kind of like, how does your research fill these buckets? And it was to, you know, sort of help us. It was part of a group where we were all a little like in that drift with, with dissertation research. Um, and so it was really about sort of reconnecting with kind of, and, and, and highlighting the value, like, why are you doing this particular research? You know, what's motivating you? And it, it really is about being able to articulate and make your values and actions in the world sort of all align um, to give you that motivation to sort of move forward. Um, but it helps you refine your thoughts about a particular thing, whatever you're focused on. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on this model before we start uh, taking some, I, I would probably give people like at least five minutes to think about it on their own in a normal context. So if I were going to use this with my students, I would actually, and again, what I often do, because this is a complex thing and, and we do some goal planning stuff. And if I were to use this with them, I would have them think about them each separately and then bring them together, not have them think about all of it. Um, and then, you know, sort of help them, help them see how they can integrate those separate parts of themselves. Um, I think it's overwhelming to see all of it at once, unless you're sort of mm. sure in terms of your ability to self-reflect. Yeah, maybe you would share it at the end of the class and have them think about it and work on their own and then share it to everybody else afterwards. That would give them time to think it through. Bob, you were going to say something, right? Well, I was going to say um, that I know the method or I know the, the, the concept and I've always thought it was a nice and neat and sensible sort of combination. Um, but I've never actually done the exercise of trying to think it through for myself. So that would be fun. So shall I pause the recording for a minute to give us some time to work on it? And then we'll unpause, but someone remind me to unpause. Mm -hmm. All right, so I've only given people five minutes and we all agree this is not enough time <laughs> to do yeah. this. So Sam, what were you saying? Um, that it's easy to go to, for me, it's easy to go to the world needs and it's easy for me to talk about what I love and what I love to do, but talking about what I'm good at and thinking about what I'm good at um, feels uh, difficult because it feels almost like I'm bragging about something or I'm you know, it's not that it's in, it's in, it's intrusive. It's just that it's hard to talk about because it's hard to put that to, to even like articulate it for yourself. Um, and the same thing for, I can get paid for becomes a very narrow box of, you know, like lack of imagination, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> I think it's something, those are the two pieces that having an external coach or having somebody else look at it and coach you through it or have you reflect on it differently is really important. Yeah, that's, I agree. Because what I was noticing, and I, I only now realizing that you're describing what I, what I was sort of stuck with, mm -hmm. is that it's very easy to stay close to where you are. Yeah. Uh, at least for me. Perhaps that's also an artifact of the fact that I'm reasonably happy with where I am. And I think, mm -hmm. like, I'm, I think I'm, reasonably good at teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I get paid for it. I love it. 
Mm -hmm. And well, the world needs to be educated. So it seems like, okay, check, 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 done. Um, so I would, I would appreciate some coaching and getting it to a more abstract or to a more general level. That being said, I did notice that when I was writing this down, so I work, I, I work at a university of technology, so I have a, 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 tech, a technological background. So for me, it's not, I trust that if I would lose my current job, which I can't because it's a fixed contract, but if I would, I would get another one quite easily because there's a shortage of people with my background. Um, so for me, that's not the thing that I'm worried about. Um, and also that I love it and that I'm good at it is also not something I was worried about. But then I got to the what the world needs and I thought, OK, so why am I am I a little bit unhappy with what I'm doing in the place where I'm doing it? And that made, made me think, OK, so it's not just that the world needs good engineering design teachers, um, but the world does not need uncritical engineering design training, which is what I've been doing a little bit the past few years. And that gets us the engineers we've had for the past decades, which is bad. Um, so it did lead me to a place of, okay, so where's the conflict in this, in this mm -hmm. uh, combination of things for me? Yeah. I hadn't realized that earlier. So that's nice. I love this. I love this, Bob. Me I was too. gonna, based on your initial, first of all, it was very funny because you're trying to find something to be unhappy with. <laughs> in order for the yeah. exercise, I thought that was interesting. I think what you were trying to say is you're trying to be critical of your answers, right? And I was recently in a session that um, helped us to discover where our joy is. But it also, after saying the things that bring you joy, you ask, does it matter who? Does it matter what? Does it matter when? Does it matter where? Does it matter why? And mm -hmm. I think you, your why is what stuck with you. It's like, oh, why? They don't just need just engineering design. They need critical engineering design. So that matters, that it's not just engineering design. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, that's cool. Ah, Sam, you're saying in the chat that it's important to provide examples so that when we show this to students, that we can actually go through a cycle with them about ourselves, which actually just modeling it yourself and your own vulnerability and your thought process, or showing them this video of other educators going through it could be interesting. Mm -hmm. That's true. I think the the leap from the uh, third quadrant, um, or ex mm. Hmm. Okay. You know what's interesting? I actually did it in the wrong order. I just realized that we're supposed to start with I am good at. And we're supposed to end with I can get paid for. And you know what? I like the way I did it, which I started with I love, then the world needs, then I can get paid for it. And then finally, I am good at. And I felt the tension between what I get paid for, I, what Bob was saying about there's, there's a sort of duplication factor with I can get paid for, I am good at in my experience in doing this. But I also felt that same tension that Bob was articulating between kind of, um, you know, what's the difference? Where's the like sweet spot in there for like further evolution? But in doing it with I get paid first and that I'm good at afterwards, I went from something tight and context specific into something that's a gift to the world in many different contexts. And I really liked that because it made me see the transferability of what I do into bigger, broader, more needed zones of life. So that was an interesting observation. Start with two and end with That's one. So <laughs> I think I think where you are in your life might make a difference. Like for exactly, students, they still I don't agree. know what they're going to get paid for. But in your right. case, you've had many years of experience, perhaps. But the ordering, I have to say, because Sam's saying there's no right order. This was me. This is what I did with my students to yeah. help them reach a project topic. But you're right. I, I wonder if we start with different things where we would end up. That's so interesting. It is. I think also for everyone, like different duos of these things will naturally already overlap or be uh, um, uh, a happy pair. And it's like where the, the discrepancy or the conflict or the, the area for growth is, that's going to be different for everyone in every situation, right? Mm -hmm. Some people will be good at something the world loves, uh, needs, and that they love, but that you can't get paid for. Other people will be good at something they can get paid for and that the world needs, but they're struggling to love it. Um, so it's, yeah, it's going to be different for everyone. What the world. 
Yeah. This is also kind of why I suggested if you even had them do some reflective writing on each of these prompts totally separately from this activity mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then bring it together to 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 sort of spark that that critical analysis. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of like, you know, because these are all hard things for students and for ourselves. Um, so, you know, it's almost like before you introduce this concept let's talk about these things or reflect on those things and let's do this and let's do that and then bring it together and then reflect on the exercise, bringing it all together. Absolutely. I see that. I see the difference in that. Um, and it's interesting that in my own logic, you know, Maha said she just created this and then I'm imposing on it this cyclical concept in my own brain, like that it has to be evolutionary in some way, like from step one to step two. It's fascinating, right? what we bring to the perception of these reflective uh, you know, processes, yeah. Yeah, I didn't follow the numbers at all. I just did what was easiest first. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> and that's interesting too, right? You know, what, you know, you know this response immediately versus I have to pause and think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it was so like, okay, I can get paid for teaching. That's what I do. I can get paid for that. <laughs> Doing yeah, that one first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and at different phase of life, that's the hardest one, right? Yeah, definitely. It'll definitely be different for our students, I think. Yeah. But yeah. Was there one where you got stuck or realized something, Heather? I think the world needs. I was like, the world oh, needs a lot of things. I was like, yeah, the world right. needs a lot of things. And how do I connect this with me? So I was like, okay. I guess the world needs critical and creative ways of thinking and acting. That's what I finally came up with. But it took me a while to get there. Yeah. I, the, right away that one popped out of my brain I, I did do that cycle thing so I got to it second but I thought the first thing was justice and then the second thing was restorative um, moves in our world like meaning the environment I was addressing like nature and and the world environmental stuff but it's, it's interesting like, how we you know yeah but then we in my mind, the question was maybe uh, justice. That's nice. How do you get paid for justice? You don't. Write that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why I didn't get in the paid category. <laughs> I am what, right what now. Why it's not I number one. <laughs> I'm literally right now trying to figure out how to get my institution to value the socially just care work that Mia and I are working on. Yeah. And if I was doing this, I, I mean, I'm doing this exercise all the time in my head which is how do I get my institution to value the thing that I think the world needs right now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, but here's the thing that I was thinking about. If me having Mia in this room reminds me of the work, the research and the work and the practice that Mia and I do. So doing this in this group makes me think about my fest a lot more than if I was doing yeah. it in my department meeting. Right. And that's also interesting. Like yeah. who do you sit with when you do this exercise? and where and all the all these other things that can influence um entire thing. okay it's time to does anybody want to say something before i close the breakout room i just want to say that i think maha for you and i the big gap is the institutional space because in this network space justices and the it's forefront of our you know but also in our teaching you know that is forefront so it's that like in between space of the institution understanding that's the pain point for us right exactly. <laughs> i agree that's something right. i wanted to to briefly get back to perhaps to close off also like what, what you can be paid for i also interpreted that as like where can i have sort of stability and security of of yeah. getting paid for the coming mm. few years so right. for me that brought made me think about like what are the like what platform do i have or what what situation do i have to leverage or to exploit to do the other things like okay i can get paid yes. for this particular <laughs> job I know that. So how can I shape that or, or work within or around it to achieve the other parts? Wow. Exactly. That, yes, so much that, Bob, thank you for closing yeah. us off on that note. Yeah.